Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in again for another weekly update on news and information about DCS World. I hope this video finds you well wherever you're tuning in from today. Of course, I'm your host Prickly Hedgehog, so let's dip into another very interesting newsletter from Eagle Dynamics this week. And we're also going to take a little look at some exciting news from Polychop and the Kiowa, which I know many of you have been asking for for months now. Uh, as well as a couple of interesting images from both Flying Iron Simulations and RASBAM on respective projects that they're working on for DCS World. Let's start, of course, with the ED newsletter, which centers, of course, on updates to the Viper and the Apache. Now, as you saw, WAGS has been busier than a countermeasure dispenser this week, throwing up a swag of videos on both the Apache and the Viper. And for the Viper, it included some very interesting news about programming for the countermeasure system. Now, they're telling us here that the next vital feature that's kind of wrapped up and is part of that whole thing is going to be the ECM system. And specifically, we're referencing here the ECM pods. Now, previously, they've told us we're going to be having the ALQ-131 and ALQ-184 ECM pods, but they're also going to give us some new symbology for the FCR jamming indications, which is really cool. Now, I believe the pods in real life are made by Northrop Grumman, and of course, they are no stranger to electronic warfare systems, including historical aircraft like the Prowler, but believe it or not, they're also working on stuff for the F-35 today, which is neat stuff. Now, how that kind of sophisticated technology is going to be represented in the DCS world game uh, is going to be interesting. Obviously, we're delving into the realms of some pretty closely guarded proprietary technology. Uh, so... This actually came up as a little bit of a discussion, speaking of sensitive, uh, when we'll talk about this later on in the video with regards to the Apache. Nevertheless, the simulated representation of this technology, these ECM pods, for the in-game experience is going to be a helpful addition to the Viper's survivability right now, especially in conjunction with the countermeasure system as represented in the aircraft. Now, in addition to these changes, ED has signaled some upcoming updates to the flare pictures for the Viper, something that we've touched on previously, and these are going to be modeled or remodeled for better representation across the various platforms that use that system. In addition to that, we're also going to see some new air-to-ground symbology in the helmet-mounted queuing system, so a good good stuff. This aircraft has really come along leaps and bounds in the last two quarters, so uh, we've got a lot more to come, of course, in 2022, but it's good news. The aircraft is definitely getting more functional, it seems, every other month, so good stuff. Now, let's turn back to the Apache. They're working on some pretty sophisticated stuff to do with the dynamic excuse me, modeling, and they're using, of course, their subject matter experts to help them in this area. What they're basically referencing here is stuff that you stick on the aircraft influencing the balance or the balance state of the aircraft because obviously the center of gravity can move around a little bit. Now we're talking of course more specifically and realistically surface deflections from the flight control surfaces but also drag from a landing gear, drag from weapon systems of course and even things like the internal fuel load. Again all of this can have a play if you like on the basic stability and the center of gravity of the aircraft. So to make sure that these things are properly modeled the SMEs are basically taking it up for a spin and checking to make sure that the aircraft doesn't do unrealistic things or becomes unworkable and then they can go back and reassess and make sure that they've uh, you know, got the calculations correct essentially is what's going on there. That's my uh, plane man's guide to um, test pilot, <laughs> uh, if you like, uh, work in a virtual world, which is pretty cool stuff. So I hope that makes sense. Anyway, the, uh, the work obviously is very, very important because we've seen actually quite a lot of input from real pilots with DCS. There's a lot of real pilots out there like Casmo TV, Mover, Gonki, and others too are providing some very, very useful feedback, not only to us as viewers in terms of what we can expect from these aircraft and how it differs a little bit because this is complex stuff. It's very difficult to mimic the mass and the aerodynamic forces and all those things in a 2D screen, even in VR, uh, to accurately represent what's really happening. And there's a lot of stuff that you simply can't. And we actually joked about that in the air warfare group last week when we were discussing how difficult some of the maneuvers that we were doing just based on a 
you know, using track IR and having visual references, what we were thinking was maybe adding some blood pressure cuffs to our legs that kick in when we start pulling 4G so we can get that physical feel. Now that's a gross exaggeration, but it is uh, in a way what pilots get through feel that you just can't recreate. Obviously we don't want uh, people passing out behind the keyboard where they have a coffee in hand trying to pull 9G. That's not what I'm referencing. But you know these subtle things just simply can't be felt, even with those um, cool, very, very cool moving uh, chair things that you have now. I forget the appropriate term, but uh, you know what I'm referencing, the uh, those full uh, cockpits and things, which are very, very cool. There are limitations. Well, switching here over, as mentioned, to the 3D modeling of the flare rendered objects and multifunction displays for those aircraft that support that particular technology, that's being updated. And the attention to detail here is actually pretty impressive. The ED team have considered such things as how the wheels driven over certain terrain and length of time are going to emit a different kind of heat signature or radiation for the flare to or the flare to pick up. I've got to get that word right because I've been criticized for that in the past. Uh, and another more obvious one perhaps is the radiation from guns and cannons and even uh, engines and what they emit again for the radar to pick up. So Edie has said keep your eyes peeled for this tech in the near future. It is very very cool and I can't wait to see what that looks like. I'm hoping we get some updated explosion uh, effects as well for some of this stuff. We'll see how we go with that. So really neat technology anyway. Now there was an interesting snippet 10 minutes into the video on the Apache TDS basics from WAGS regarding data link info. Now according to the direct quote, WAG said a secondary data link system is not planned at this time due to sensitivity issues and a lack of reference data. Now I noted later that Casmo TV quipped in his uh, community page on YouTube. Uh, he said the following that how, how dare a civilian company claim that something the military uses is sensitive enough that they don't want to try and model it for their video game. This is an outrage. Which sparked, of course, some interesting discussion from his followers, ranging from what are you talking about to yes, this is an outrage. Uh, now, I'm unaware of the, you know, what specifically is being referred to in terms of that data that is available uh, to the pilot and how necessary it is and um, a whole lot of other questions I obviously have. What I speculate here is that it doesn't appear this is going to ground the Apache in any way, shape or form. It's a secondary system. Obviously it's an additional layer of some kind, but I am flying a little bit blind on this particular piece of information. Now it's interesting that Wags mentioned it in passing, and I don't think it was to spark controversy. I mean Wags is a clever guy. He's not, um, as you probably can tell, he's never going to say anything as a throwaway. Uh, whatever he says is obviously carefully planned. But I think it was probably likely to placate the eagle-eyed among you wondering where that feature was after the helicopter came out and why it wasn't um, implemented. Because a lot of people do try to get the manuals and things like that and then later on they realize something hasn't been modeled and why isn't it. And there's a lot of uh, you know subject matter experts out there in their own right who are, who are aware of these things. Um, for myself of course in my own vast experience of never flying an Apache or having any experience whatsoever with the TDS system, the uh, system reference might as well be magic to me and if it wasn't mentioned I probably wouldn't have noticed its absence. Now I suspect, could be wrong, but I suspect I'm not alone in that ignorance is bliss department with regards to that. Still it was an interesting comment and as Wags indicated it's not being implemented at this time, uh, in quotes there, this time, which of course is not a shut the door completely comment. I think there may be room for change in that. So stay tuned. Again, I don't want to make a ridiculous mountain out of something that seems relatively harmless. Uh, but again, not knowing really how that is going to influence, uh, you know, the video game portion of this. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm being slightly cheeky here, um, compared to the real version, uh, it's it's difficult to know whether this is even relevant. So we'll, we'll see how it evolves. But overall, there's so many other things to be much more excited about in terms of the uh, quality of this particular product. And let's again hope that it comes out in January 
2022 as promised. Now getting back to that video, it was pretty interesting in itself. There's a lot of data available to the pilot from this particular feature, including sort of terrain features and object selections. And it's clear it's going to be a pretty involved aircraft, which of course is part of the frustration and fun with new modules. And of course, most of us who play the game have no time to really learn or master them, but it won't stop us from hacking about for 20 minutes or so before bedtime on a weeknight, hoping to do a little bit more flying in the weekend and then some other life event kicks in. But you know, that's how it goes, right? For most of us. Still, it's exciting stuff and I can't wait to delve into that and uh, play around and just see what this uh, helicopter has to offer because it's looking pretty sophisticated. Now, speaking of interesting things, and we're getting close to the end of the video here, but we're going to talk about a couple of really tantalizing images from Razbam, who showcased some more work on the F-15E. We've been getting quite a few of these recently, and I don't know what it's uh, really going to signal. Uh, of course, the general applause from these um, images was pretty resounding, but obviously we do need to see whether or not they're going to be accompanied by systems, otherwise that eye candy is merely a shell. So I'm eager to see if we start seeing some images of the functionality of the systems within the aircraft and we're talking here radar symbology, RWR symbology, which is probably less of an issue uh, because there are some I don't want to say placeholders, but there's a there's a system that uh, Eagle Dynamics uses that I believe that the third party uh, people have access to as well. So some of this stuff is not necessarily um, that uh, technical, uh, but nonetheless, we do need to see a little bit more from the aircraft before we can really get excited. Nonetheless, I know a lot of you are looking to just throw your wallets at Razban for pre-orders because it is a very, very popular aircraft. And of course, it is uh, going to be a heck of a lot of fun to fly and give us uh, you know another platform to work with. I noticed that it being um, a dual-seater, and I believe Air Force aircraft of this nature have dual controls, it might also be a pretty high-end trainer as well. Uh, probably obviously not designed for that purpose, but nonetheless, uh, we'll see uh, how it comes to fruition. So, All right, so spinning over here to the Corsair 2, we saw some very nice images titled Night Ops from the Flying Iron Simulations uh, team. And this, of course, is in reference to the A7E2 Corsair. It's definitely a work in progress at this stage, but some progress is being made, and I'm very excited for this aircraft. I know a lot of you have been um, very positive uh, in uh, seeing this aircraft in development with a hopefully a future role in DCS World for, of course, carrier ops. So again, uh, exciting stuff. So roll on the updates. Um, flying iron because we do enjoy them and I think a lot of us are looking forward to that. Well let's move here to the last part of the video which is a little bit bittersweet really. So we knew that Polychop had been very very quiet about the Kiowa. We really hadn't seen a lot of information, snippets every now and again. I had wondered is it dead? Uh, some of you said no, there's been some stuff on um, Twitch, for example, the aircraft is being worked on. Basically what happened is, it sounds like we've got a very small team of a couple of people working on this. And one of the programmers basically has had some illness, which essentially reduced the productivity by about 50% or more. Very, very difficult thing to deal with in a small studio like that. So essentially, you know, that really interrupted their flow. They've got other things going on. They've been fortunately been in contact with Eagle Dynamics, who've been very patient with them apparently. So it was a pretty long letter, and I'll reference that again. Um, you can check it out on my community page. I'll let you read it for yourself. But the team basically sort of apologized for what's going on, explained what was happening. But the good news is that the project is not dead. They are still continuing to work on it. As for when it's ready, of course, which is what you're all wondering, it will be done when it's done. And, you know, that's a very vague, obviously, and perhaps um, obviously nebulous term, and it really doesn't mean anything. But I think we have to, you know, give some slack to the team. This is devastating news to have a person suffering from some illness and some stuff going on there uh, that really hampered the production. So the work that they have done thus far, what we've seen looks promising. So we had a lot of speculation over the last 12 months as to what could be going on there. Now we have our answer and I think we need to lay off a little bit, uh, let the team work out um, what they need to and get back on track. And I think we're all looking forward to this particular aircraft being in game. It's going to be a very useful 
aircraft to work with as a spotter for the Apache, which is what it does in real life amongst other tasks that it has. Great, great aircraft. So let's hope that um, Polychop can get back on track. I wish them all the best. Uh, we're all excited. We're all rooting for you. So uh, stay tuned for more on that. And uh, yeah, that pretty much rounds out our newsletter. So there you have it. Busy third-party developers from Rasbam to um, Flying Iron and of course Polychop and many, many others too that I've neglected to mention. And of course Eagle Dynamics is full steam ahead on both the F-16 and the Apache. It's shaping up to be a pretty good year. I, for one, am very much looking forward to the next open beta update, which I think is probably coming here pr probably in the next uh, week and a half. So stay tuned for that. And of course, I'm looking forward to Equal Dynamics' uh, next video, which will probably be just at the end of the year, the 2022 and beyond. That's when we get all of our little goodies and you know references to what we've worked on and what's coming up for 2022, as I said, <laughs> beyond. Yeah, all right, well long newsletter this week. Again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel chug along. I do have uh, changes planned a little bit for some of the format that I'm going to be doing as long as I can keep uh, uh, the current schedule that I am. So expect some changes in 2022. Hopefully they'll be positive ones. And uh, yeah, like I said, keep, uh, keep the comments going, keep the likes going. It helps with the motivation for me. Uh, and of course, it also helps with the channel exposure and the growth and it gives me more flexibility to do more stuff for you so yeah stay tuned there's good stuff coming all right once again thank you everybody take care we'll see you next time it's prickly hedgehog out